you everybody for joining us. My name is Regina Farrell Fagan and I'm the exhibitions manager at Clay Art Center. And uh, you're all very welcome uh, to be here with us tonight as we meet and greet our new artists and residents, Annie Chen and Ava Broyles, and um, listen to them talk about uh, their work tonight and uh, share some insight with us. Abel, when you're ready, please go ahead and you can get started. All right. Thank you so much, Regina. Yeah, I'll go ahead and share my screen. All right, can uh, everybody see that? Is that, can you see that, Regina? Yep, that's perfect, thank you. <laughs> okay, great, thank you for the confirmation. Um, so yes, uh, I, my name, hello, my name is Abel Royals. I wanna thank you all for attending this event tonight. Um, I put together a collection of images of past works, um, reference material, and current works in progress to help you get an idea of who I am and what I'm working on here as an artist in resident at the Clay Art Center. All right. So I am originally from Atlanta, Georgia. I started my formal uh, education in clay in a very pottery focused program at UNC Asheville in North Carolina um, before I transferred to the University of Georgia my junior year where I began working sculpturally. Um, during my time at UGA, I had the opportunity of studying abroad at their campus in Cortona, Italy, where I was exposed um, where I got to witness a lot of Italian Renaissance work and Roman Greco art. Greco-Roman art, sorry, um, that I think you'll find um, evidence of in the works I have to show you this evening. After I received um, my BFA winter of 2016, um, I moved to New Orleans, Louisiana, where I started a three-year-long apprenticeship in auto mechanics. I learned a lot about cars and a lot about myself through that experience, um, but it was quite difficult to balance um, the very physically demanding work with my art practice. Um, so in the year 2020, I went down to part-time so I could pursue my post back at Tulane University. Um, and when that concluded, I started looking for other opportunities in clay, which led me to the artist in residency position here at Clay Art Center. So this summer, my dog Pickens and my cat Cranky and I all packed up and moved here. Um, and it's been a pleasure thus far. So I wanted to include um, some images of my undergraduate professors, uh, Ted Sape and Sung Koo Yu. Um, they were kind of my exposure to clay as a sculptural medium. Um, and I think they had a pretty large influ influence on me developing my artistic voice. I really um, enjoy that their work is quite visually different, but um, they're working with someone like a similar dialogue. Um, Ted working with vessels, but still um, incorporating that narrative and working with the human figure. Um, so I'm working in a hollow sculptural um, of the human figure and also working with that narrative. They both have a similar process of working through stream of consciousness um, that just really influenced me in my beginnings. Both incredible artists, if you aren't yet familiar with them. <laughs> um, so I have a few images of my exit show from undergrad, um, just to give you a reference point. I was allotted a large amount of space um, in which I was able to do a large scale installation combining found material and ceramic sculpture. Um, it was quite a lovely opportunity. So here's a detail shot of that wall piece. Um, that is a found bed sheet um, along with small stylized baby hands stitched into it. And here are some additional images of that show. Um, at the time I was working pretty much exclusively um, at a cone seven reduction of stoneware using an iron wash and soda ash on my surfaces to get a really like toasted surface. Um, but I was pretty much leaving my surfaces up to the kiln atmosphere. Um, and releasing control on that. Another important experience in my uh, ceramic education that seems critical to note is um, I had the opportunity in fall 2019 to be a short-term intern for Christina Cordova. And I'm just amazed, um, you know, with, with just the short amount of time that I was with her, the amount that I learned from her, um, as well as my fellow intern, Sarah Petty, um, whose work has also just been an inspiration to me since. Um, 
we were working on a body of work uh, entitled Cuerpo Exquisito um, that then was shown in Hodges Taylor Gallery in Charlotte, North Carolina that November of 2019. Um, below is an image of one of the works um, that we helped assemble. And there's our, our group photo at the end of our internship with one of the figures that we worked on. So after this experience and getting to see um, Christina's process um, and just being in this surrounded by clay once again, it was really what inspired me to refocus my energy on clay um, and just realizing how much time and energy was being taken by my work um, at the auto shop, though I loved it. Um, so when I returned from that internship, I approached Tulane about establishing a post back program program. Um, so these, I have some of the works that I completed during that time. Uh, this was a series of studies on um, a posture inspired by the Greco-Roman sculpture Spinario, which is also, uh, also titled Boy with Thorn, um, that hunched position of someone removing a thorn from their foot. And that was just one of my, um, the favorite, my favorite pieces that I encountered in my time in Italy. It's always just kind of stuck with me. Um, so some abstractions on that form. These, again, you can see I'm still working in that cone seven reduction atmosphere for my surfaces. And those studies led into this piece, um, which is a um, life-sized um, child in that same posture of Spinario picking a thorn out of his foot. Um, this is a functional fountain and when fully assembled, stands about three feet tall. Um, it was designed to pump uh, used engine oil. Uh, so living in southern Louisiana, surrounded by the oil industry and also working in auto mechanics, it was something I was very um, aware of, but it is also um, very difficult to live in southern Louisiana or the Gulf Coast and not feel the effects that oil drilling has had on the coastline and flooding um, and all other environmental factors. Um, so this is kind of speaking to that and um, paralleling with the, the thorn in the foot. So this is a piece um, titled Tides, um, again, inspired by the Italian Renaissance and cherubs and those idealized forms, um, working with that small stylized hand that uh, often shows up as a symbol in my work. Um, but this is notable in that I was it's so like the first time I was really challenging myself to push my surfaces past just using the atmosphere of the kiln. Um, so I'm working with some cold finishes as well as dry glazes. I, at Tulane, I had the opportunity of studying with Jeremy Jernigan, who's the head of department there. And he is just a wealth of knowledge on glazes, particularly dry glazes. So that was just a wonderful experience to be able to broaden my vocabulary in glazes while there. Um, so I just really love the surfaces of this piece and that just kind of inspired um, my work moving forward. And this is a series entitled um, Bubble Gum Fingernails um, from the left to the right, also entitled Fester, Horde, and Ignite. Um, so this is a series inspired by EDMR therapy, which is the process of using bilateral stimulation in order to access unprocessed memories or trauma stored in your body. Um, so I'm kind of paralleling that with a fable that I was told as a child, um, which you may have heard or you may have not. I've, I've, I've done a poll and it's about 50-50. Um, but as a child, I was told a story of a young girl who chewed her fingernails and swallowed her bubble gum and she met an untimely death. Um, and in her autopsy, they unearthed a wad of bubble gum and fingernails from her gut. Um, so, you know, just a, just a harmless tale to scare your children into um, good manners, um, but kind of putting, um, paralleling that with the process of uh, these traumas that can be stuck in your body with this idea of being masked um, within. So again, exploring surface. Um, here are some detailed shots. The one on the left titled Horde, um, those hands are kind of coveting this mass uh, that is made up of resin and ashes from a particular artifact from my childhood. Um, and then on the right, 
are some spark plugs um, that I scavenged um, from the auto shop. I fired those to cone one, which did some interesting things to the surfaces of the metals. Um, it was really quite fun having access to all those old car parts to kind of um, incorporate into my work. But uh, yes, referencing some core memories from my life um, in these pieces here. And then this is a piece entitled Both Sides. Um, the pieces on the wall were formed as whole objects um, that were then cut in half to kind of highlight the similarities and the differences um, at first glance appearing like mirror images, but being quite different. Um, and this is kind of speaking to um, the difference between self and body. Um, again, referencing ancient Greek sculpture and the Venus de Milo posture that you see down there. And here is a detailed shot of that wall section of this piece. And then my final piece I made during my time at Tulane um, is this piece titled Container. Um, for me, there's just this constant relationship between clay, a vessel, and the figure as a vessel. Um, so this is a very a stylized posture, yet again, similar to what we saw at the beginning of my work at Tulane. Um, and that mass on the top kind of uh, insinuating a bun of hair um, actually removes as a stopper. So you can then view the inside of this to see that it is a vessel. Um, I was really enjoying this abstraction of the body with just the um, isolated finishing of the face. Um, again, kind of isolating those concepts of self and identity versus body and form and exploring color and surfaces yet again. Um, that was really what I got from my time in Tulane was um, yeah, getting uh, broader expressions through my surfaces in glaze application. All right. And then to present day here at the Clay Arts Center. Um, I'm continuing with these ideas of identity and body. Um, these are just some examples of demos I've done for my classes. Um, but for myself, I'm exploring uh, more individualism in the faces that I sculpt, as well as more detailed um, specified expression. Um, it's been really fun being in a classroom and having people interested in my process and having to go through and verbalize that to others. It's been really helpful um, and just kind of revealing some stuff to myself about my process. Um, so these are a couple of pieces. But general themes that I'm always working on in previous work and ongoing work, um, it all sort of, my work all sort of resolve, revolves around um, concepts of identity and our subconscious, um, memories and where all that is held in our bodies. Um, I personally find that through working with my hands, particularly with clay, the action of making um, helps me access deeper layers of my memory or subconscious. Um, my art making is a way of me making sense of things that I can't yet identify or don't yet have language for. Um, so my whole process, I'm constantly trying to um, accumulate a uh, like a language of symbols or a visual alphabet to communicate with my viewer. Um, some books that I'm uh, currently consuming um, that follow um, these ideas, sorry, um, or as uh, Man and His Symbols by Carl Jung and I Am a Strange Loop by Douglas Hofstadter. Um, so these both touch on um, the meaning we apply into um, symbols that create a language, working with our subconscious and where the idea of I comes into play, um, where we find identity and what actually that means in our psyche. Um, and I'm a strange loop is kind of um, gets very far into uh, feedback loops. Um, so I've demonstrated in my studio here with mirrors, a feedback loop um, where you just see a, an infinity of my messy studio space, um, but that we and ourselves and our identity are in the simplest concept, which is not quite so simple, um, feedback loops. <laughs> 
So the particular body of work that I'm working on um, here that will be part of my show coming this summer is focusing on relationship with others, um, how people can act as our mirrors and how we are defined by the space that we are in. Um, so I've included this image of the crescent moon because we are aware of our presence in space because of the shadow we cast on the face of the moon, um, which is just something I think about often I'll get at night um, gazing up at the sky. Um, and also including a uh, cave of hands um, in Argentina because this is just something that it stood out for me, it stood out to me um, as such a powerful moment in art history. Some some of our, our first art making um, being self documentation through handprint um, and just this gesture of like identity and I am here. Um, so you'll notice or have noticed through my work that I use um, some hands as symbols um, or particularly this stylized hand you see down below. Um, and I wanted to include, include this quote um, from the book I'm reading by Carl Jung. Um, Our psyche is part of nature and its enigma is as limitless. Um, so just trying to conquer some of these really big concepts um, in my art making. Um, and in my current body of work, I'm using um, contrasting clay bodies with terracotta and porcelain um, to kind of address um, separation of self and body or consciousness versus subconsciousness. There are themes up there. Um, so some work in progress, um, working on a series of hands um, in working with string games. Um, so thinking uh, such as, you know, childhood string games such as Cat's Cradle. Um, so I'm, I'm often drawn to focusing on moments of like childhood when we are awakening to our consciousness or uh, just coming into our identities or adopting a sense of identity. Um, and it is through games that children learn how to interact with others and you kind of learn how you exist in space. Um, so using uh, these childlike games um, to kind of address some of those ideas um, and our interpersonal relationships and our entanglement with one another. I am um, also often uh, drawn to working with hair as just like a um, formation. I, I see, you know, hair is geological core where you can uh, track time passage through that sample. Um, uh, so this uh, on the left here, is actually my first clipping of hair. My mother um, gave this to me while I was passing through Atlanta this summer on my way moving here. She found it um, while cleaning out the basement. Um, and my baby bracelet from the day I was born um, is just a, a capturing of me and a moment of time and that person no longer exists. Um, and on the right is um, a harvest of hair from the summer when I shaved my head and that is documenting a particular chapter of my life. Um, so that hair is being used um, in a piece that is a dustpan and brush. And so I was threading this brush by hand and this process also is just embedded into the work um, in the end. And so it was, it was physically um, taxing as I've included um, the wire marks on my fingers as I had to pull for tension on the hair um, of the bristles of the brush. Um, and also it was emotionally trying. I, I think I was a bit surprised just um, how I felt charted by unpacking that hair and touching it and feeling it. And also just the smell um, of, you know, whatever shampoo I used at that time really transported me um, back into that moment, um, which is all just kind of part of this piece, um, which is still in progress, but here are some photos um, to show you kind of where it's going. Um, so within these ideas of focusing on self in relationship to others and how we are defined or reflected in others, I'm also working on about on ideas of loss and grief um, through those relationships. So this is um, the the terracotta kind of uh, to symbolize like the messiness of these feelings um, and this like process of grief um, and loss. So yes, uh, that is 
um, what I have for you this evening. I want to thank you all for um, attending and listening to me. If you want to see any of these images, um, spend more time with them. Most of them can be found on my website, AnnabelleBroyles.com. You're also welcome to email me if any questions. Um, you can email me at AnnabelleBroyles at gmail.com or also my CAC email, which is just Abel at Clay Art Center. Dot org and please follow me on Instagram able.clay for more images of um, works in progress and just an insight into my studio. Um, but yes, thank you so much for being here. I will return to the Zoom. <laughs> thank you so much, Abel. That was really incredible. Um, thank you. And I'm sure people will have questions. Uh, for you in a little while, and I'm just going to invite Annie to go ahead and uh, unmute and start sharing her screen too. Hi everyone. Okay, let me screen share. Can everyone see? Yep, that's good, Annie. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Um, I'll just get right to it. Thank you guys for coming tonight. Um, this is my first artist talk, but I guess um, I'm just here to share a little bit about my background, some previous work that I did uh, in the last few years of undergrad, and then my current work now. But if you haven't met me, my name is Annie Chen. I'm one of the residents this year, and I, I grew up in Nowata, Oklahoma for about eight years from the ages of five to 13. And that time has been, it's been one of the places that I've lived in the longest, but also a place of great discomfort and um, well, we had this restaurant there, and that's why we were there, as uh, my parents wanted to open a Chinese restaurant in a very rural part of Oklahoma. So that's definitely skewed my sense of belonging, and a lot of that carries into my work now. I started um, as a graphic design major at the Maryland Institute College of Art in 2015, but then I ended up graduating uh, with a BFA in ceramics in 2019. And during that time, I was drawn to clay and like the ceramics department in general because there, it felt like a very welcoming space. There was a lot of uh, sort of communal events that I felt was lacking in graphic design. And then the material itself drew me in. I started also as a potter, and I still consider my work more wheel thrown, but um, during the residency now, I'm trying to move into more hand-built work, and I'll show more of that later. But um, this is the view of the sky outside my sophomore year dorm, and a lot of my services are trying to recreate this view and this like um, blending of color and light but it's lots of glaze testing that I haven't done yet. Um, so in 2018 I got the chance to study abroad at the potty workshop in Jingdezhen, China and before even going I already like knew it was going to be a life-changing experience because I was sort of already obsessed with the history of like Chinese ceramic production, especially, it's such a long history. There's like 2000 years worth of just innovation, of technique, clay, and so much of it is lost already. But um, being there was just like a very overwhelming experience and I'm still working through all that, but um, seeing, the day-to-day -day life, how integrated ceramics is into this city, um, the histor history of it, 
this lady here, her name is Chen Ming. She taught me how to carve on porcelain, which I brought into later work. Um, and then like having the a vector design source book, which is a book that I still reference sometimes when I need um, guidance. Like you, if I want to draw more traditional symbols, um, which was what my work was focused on during undergrad. Um, but yeah, like seeing all this work made me want to contribute to this canon, speak to this canon and like reference this canon, but also wanting to actually add to it and have an, my own interpretation of it. Cause before I, like I didn't really understand just the scale and the amount of work that went into each product. Like this is just one back alley studio, but like there's hundreds of them across the city. And then the sheer mass of just producing bricks um, and like being surrounded in nature and seeing these clouds and these mountains that like a lot of traditional Chinese painters were seeing and really understanding what they saw and how they could paint such beautiful and misty landscapes. And I just wanted to like bring that into all of my work. So this was when I went to Huashan and there's some, <laughs> there's a site there that's called the Plank Road. And basically you're just connected by like a cord, like two cords attached to the side of the mountain. And you're just like hovering off of the mountain. And that's the closest I've been to like the sky. And I just felt it was just so awe inspiring. And um, before then, like I thought uh, the pattern on the left is called Xiang, Xiang Yun, which roughly translates to uh, I translate it as lucky cloud, but I guess it would be more accurate to call it a fortuitous cloud or a good cloud of good fortune. But um, after coming back, I like realized the cloud symbol for me was more a motif that meant connection across space, across time. And I integrated that into my new work after coming back. So this was one of the first pieces I made, um, it wasn't in, it wasn't for my thesis show, but I think I was just doing some exploration with like a Ming fret pattern that I had uh, CNC'd onto like foam and like made a plaster mold out of, but I casted six tiles in porcelain and then I like did a resist pattern on it that spelled out the word, spelled out the letters BYE for by and going into this, I didn't expect myself to make it a performance, but I think I was like open to the idea. So basically what happened was I had laid them out in front of a entryway to one of the college buildings and we were having crit in that like atrium space. And it was, I didn't really anticipate how busy it was going to be, but I think about 10 people walked in through this tour door and all 10 of them managed to step on the piece or kick the piece or the door like hit it but something would happen and then like in the middle of our two hour long crit I would have to like leave to reset the piece back and every time it was just like a very shaking experience because this was about being careful in an environment and having to look before you walk. And it, it was just like very, uh, I think I just was like out of my body the entire time just because I didn't expect so many people to be so careless in an in art institution. Um, so then my next piece, like my remake of that I tried to cast the tiles thicker and then like I actually created a frame for it so that it was more, it spoke more to the welcome mat style. But then when I actually like displayed the piece, it was definitely in a more formalized setting. Like I had it in one of my mid-year exhibitions, but then I felt, 
I guess, a little let down because none of my audience members felt inclined to step on it. I think it was just like too high on a pedestal. But then like, of course, like everything is bolder in this iteration. Um, but I do remember one of the visiting artists coming and like she had stepped on the piece and it just made like this horrible sound. And I just felt a little vindicated like because I felt like I guess I just felt excited that there was that like terrorizing experience for the audience, reminding them to be careful, but then also re, re, mm, restating the durability of ceramics and how like, even though she like stepped on it, she didn't really do anything to this, like these really then I think these tiles are only like half an inch thick, but they were fully solid slip, slip casted and they still remain in one piece. Um, this one is also slip casted. I had been wanting to do a workshop that would uh, teach people how to play mahjong. Um, so when I was making this piece, I purposely inset the like face of the tiles into the tile itself. Um, so like when people are just like sitting back in their seats, they can't see other people's pieces, but like it's really easy for me to lean over and guide them and like kind of see what their hand looks like. Um, so I was like really excited to teach that and like during my senior, this was during, this, all this work was during senior year, but during my senior year, I was really wanting to explore different modes of audience participation and how to get more people to interact with my work and really take their time with it and engage on my terms. And I felt really successful in being able to share this um, sort of sweet moment to me. Uh, Cause when I was a child, it was always like a family tradition to play mahjong together after New Year's. And then I really wanted to recreate that in a art environment. And just some more installation shots. So this is my thesis work. Um, I didn't really start sort of piecing it together until the last half of my senior year but my, like, for the most part, I think I was trying to explore different ways of belonging and uh, I view the board series as me exploring how to belong to tradition and recreating slash perfecting my wheel throwing skills was very important to me this year because of like, my experience in Jing Dijin and seeing how how good they are at throwing. I just um, felt compelled to also improve my throwing and explore the gourd form because one of the masters there said that the gourd form was like the graduating test basically of like if you're a master thrower or not if you like if you can throw the gourd and when piece with like one mound of clay, then like you're done basically. Um, but these pieces were not thrown in them, one piece. I still have a ways to go with my wheel throwing. Um, so these stools were made as a, I wanna say they were a gift to my family and the illustrations are the surface of them and the style of them were very specifically chosen with them in mind. Um, I referenced specific periods of Chinese ceramic styles, uh, like the left is from the Tang Dynasty called San, San Tai, which is just three tricolor glaze, um, or sometimes it's called polychrome glaze, and then the one on the right is from a sister called, it's called um, Sejo wear, which is just a black slip on a white stone or body usually. Um, then this one on the left is more of a 
commoner era Sun Dynasty stone, white stoneware, and then the one on the right is, of course, blue and white. So, like, through all these pieces, I'm really trying to bring in my knowledge of the Chinese ceramics canon, but then also try to connect that with different ways that my family members and I show love to each other or the different um, depictions of our interactions and trying to, I guess, make them feel something or make them feel compelled to sit here and have a conversation with me in this like very public space in an exhibition. Um, it was only a three day event, but like it never, like it never happened. And I do view this piece as a little bit of like, it's kind of gonna be the final piece that I'm gonna make uh, about belonging to my family or belonging in a family unit. Um, And oh, the bowls are sort of supposed to be this like unifying gathering place um, with like the soup bowl, rice bowl dialogue, but yeah. Um, and then the bed piece I made for myself, um, it references a dip in the brick sidewalk that I would walk by every year during undergrad. Um, I like had always felt really drawn to this dip in the sidewalk and I wanted to recreate that for myself. Like I still don't really understand why I like that dip so much but um, just getting that idea out there and out of my system felt really important to me. So then I just went along with it. So I would say this piece is more about belonging to myself. And here's some process shots of it, but um, I made like a little wood molds for brick for the bricks, and like I would have to cut each one individually, and then like drill the holes out of them to speed up the drying process. But then, like after my show, I immediately took this like onagama class, and I felt so excited by the surfaces that I got out of the onagama firing and the different techniques that I use to make this stool. Um, funny story, the stool flew out of my car in an accident. So it doesn't exist anymore beyond these photos and I don't have proper documentation of it. So that is the lesson I've learned for this, at least to properly document your work when you can. Um, but anyways, I'm really excited about the surfaces that I'm seeing in here and I'm hoping to like bring that in without having to go through the wood firing process. So I would love to do another wood firing. Um, but yeah, so my work now, I wasn't able to make work for about two years, one and a half years after graduating just because um, car accident and then the pandemic hitting. Um, so that was like a real struggle for me and that's why I was looking for residencies. I just wanted like access to kilns, access to like space at least. And surprisingly, um, I wasn't really expecting to get a residency, but um, I'm very grateful for having the time and space now to explore these hand-built cloud stools that I've been thinking about for a while. Um, so this wasn't made during the residency. Uh, I was made about a month prior to at my other studio where I work at as a um, studio technician, but I'm really trying to hand-build with clay. Um, I don't consider myself a strong hand-builder, but I've been getting better at it. And these are all hollow and I've like, feel really excited by the direction that I'm going in. Um, I don't know exactly why I'm making them. I, I'm still kind of figuring that out now and I'm hoping that I'll have a better sense of that once my exhibition comes. But to me, I think they're exciting. I feel really, I like, I'm looking forward to exploring different forms. Like with this one, I had 
we all throw in some of the parts and then like I hand built some of the parts but then it started collapsing so then I had to like turn it horizontal but then like I don't know my ideas like for new stools really, really really come when I'm working on the current stool I'm already thinking about what's happening next and they're just really exciting jumping off points each time so then after this stool I Started working on this one um, and it's a little plainer but I'm interested in like the top form of it and how little small of a surface it is to sit on like I'm in, I'm really ex interested in sort of straddling uncomfortableness but also being drawn to like the surface of something and that push and pull but um, this is the one I'm working on now I'm trying to save it because it dried out a little and I'm still getting used to the um, environment of this new studio. So um, I have to figure out the drying rates better. But yeah, that's what I'm working on now. And um, this is my contact info if you want to keep up and see what I'm uh, working on right now. And yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Annie and uh, Abel. Good to see you back on the screen. Um, thank you. Thank you both. Um, I think we're going to uh, bring things to a uh, conclusion. Thank you both for sharing tonight. Your presentations were phenomenal. It was really, really amazing to hear um, your journey so far. We're looking forward to seeing what you'll do at Clay Art Centre and uh, looking forward to working with you both in the gallery next year on your exhibitions. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us. We're going to leave it at that for tonight and we'll see you back here again at Clay Art Center. Thank you. Thank you, Regina. Thank you everyone. <laughs>